All right. Hello and welcome to Conservatory Live. I'm Bella and this is Sarah and we're Hello. both here at the Conservatory and we're currently on night two of the latest Corpse Flower Bloom of Terra the Titan. So Sarah, what are the latest updates with the Conservatory and what are we seeing now? Yeah, so Terra bloomed or began the bloom last night and about 24 hours in now we're seeing still a really beautiful bloom and I uh, stopped by the conservatory this afternoon to take a few pictures and I'll, uh, I'll share you them with you all out there. Um, so, well, let's see it. Last night, well, here's a view from last night and then one of the first photos I got of the bloom. Uh, and what's been really interesting to see is the changes that have happened since that initial bloom yesterday evening. So the first thing I noticed was that the color of the spadix, that big towering part in the middle has really changed from kind of a light green into a vibrant yellow. And uh, also the bloom has started to fold back up a little bit. You can see the, the space, the outer portion, that ruffly bit is kind of beginning to fold up, but still towering, beautiful plant and really still worth seeing. And you can actually go see this plant still. Uh, the front doors of the conservatory are open. And we are, with safe social distancing and masking, it, allowing people to come up to the window and take a look, snap a photo, and even try to get a whiff. Now that the smell is getting a little less potent uh, as the bloom goes on, but it's still uh, noticeable. I've got some faint uh, Brussels sprouts and, and rotting vegetable earlier, so it's still uh, looking great and smelling a bit. Wow. Well, so... So as you guys could see, the corpse flower is pretty big. It's the largest individual, it, the largest individual can grow up to be 10 feet tall. And tonight we'll be comparing the corpse flower to various superlative big blooms and then of the botanical world. And then we'll also have time for your questions. So feel free to send them in and we'll answer them. Okay, so let's get started. And we'll start off with one question that we get frequently asked and it's, is the corpse flower the largest flower in the world? Yeah, so this is a question that we get asked often and often the corpse color is called the largest flower in the world, but it's not quite true. But don't be disappointed, it's still really special. But we'll explain why it's not exactly the largest flower in the world. And really what it is, is the largest unbranched inflorescence in the world. So let's take a little uh, and, and look at the anatomy of this plant. Uh, so I already had talked about the spadix and the spathe. Uh, and those are part, both parts that look like the massive bloom to us, but the actual flowers are really tiny and they're all the way down at the bottom, the very base of the plant. And even when you look from above, you can't really see them. Uh, it's a beautiful view into the center of the plant, but uh, it's not until you really get down below that you can see these minuscule flowers. Unfortunately, actually last night we were able to see them. This is actually a hole that was cut in the very back of the plant last night. One of our horticulturists went in to pollinate the plant. And so what he was looking for were the female flowers. And actually you can see them right here. Um, these long branchy things, they get really sticky when they're ready to be pollinated. Um, and he found them. and hopefully successfully pollinated the last night. So you can see each of one, of one of those little dots is actually a flower. And it's not really what we think about when we think of a flower. You think of a flower as beautiful with petals, but this is just more of a, a little stuff. But it's getting the important job done, which is getting pollinated and getting ready to make seeds. Uh, speaking of pollen, the plant also has uh, male flowers. And that's what you can see in this other picture that's a little bit higher up, just above the female flowers. And those are actually what will be uh, busy tonight releasing pollen in this plant. So the second night of the bloom where we are right now, that is when the male flowers become active. So these tiny little flowers uh, make together what we call an inflorescence. And that's a little different than a flower. Uh, it's a whole bunch of flowers together, basically. And one good way to see this is also to take a look at once all of the spathe and spadix and everything falls away, uh, you can see just the center here and these little orange bits are the fruits uh, and seeds of the plant. So hopefully since that pollination happened, we'll successfully see little fruits like this in a while. And that also kind of shows us where those flowers were. So that's a little anatomy lesson <laughs> of this plant, but never fear. 
Tara is still really a big plant. So here's my colleague Drew uh, standing next to Tara in her uh, first bloom in 2017. And you can see it really towers over a person. And this year's bloom uh, topped out at about six foot nine. So that's, that's still very impressive uh, nonetheless. And uh, it really does uh, raise the question though, what is the biggest flower? Bella, have you been wondering? What is the biggest flower? Actually, I think I do know what the biggest flower is. So the title goes to the Ruff Rafflesia or Arnoldi. Well, that's a hard one. So which is found in Sumatra, like our Titan Arum, as well as Borneo. This flower is about three feet wide, and it's oddly enough, it shares the common um, that it smells horrible, like rotting flesh, meaning it's also frequently called the corpse lily or even the corpse flower. So if you were asked what the largest flower in the world was and said corpse flower, you're technically not wrong, but you would pretty much be referring to this parasitic species pictured in here, which is pretty cool. Yeah, this is an amazing plant. As far as I know, this has never uh, been grown in cultivation. So I'm still waiting to uh, get to see the stinking corpse lily, but uh, really an impressive right. flower as well. Right. So I guess my next question is for you, like what is the largest unbranched inflorescence in the world? Do you know what plant has the largest inflorescence overall? Yeah, so uh, in, in the world of inflorescences, there are uh, quite a few very large ones, but the biggest one of all goes to a type of palm tree. So um, let's take a look at the winner for that, not this one, but in fact, the, uh, what we call the tollipot palm. Uh, so, this species is, grows in Sri Lanka, and you can kind of see in this picture, uh, it's quite large and the inflorescences are those big white puffy branching parts. There are literally millions of flowers on this thing when it blooms. And it can take 30 up to 60 years to for this tree to bloom. And it blooms once in its life, and then it's time for it to fruit. And each one of those little flowers can turn into a golf ball sized fruit. So. Wow. Uh, this is a, a, a very large, uh, largest inflorescence in the world, in fact, that I, I maybe I'd like to see it in flower form, but if it was fruiting, I might uh, want a duck. <laughs> so, right. Uh, oh my gosh. Wow. Well, now we've taken quite a journey in talking about all these different plants. Um, so what do you think? Is it time for questions? Yeah, so does anyone out there have any questions? You can feel free to put them in the, the chat box right now. We would be delighted to answer them. Yeah, let's take a look. I'm shy. Let's take a look. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any questions, but while people think about what their questions are, I wanted to mention one other, one other thing. So. It's really, it was for me, really difficult to wrap my head around how this first flower was many flowers in an inflorescence. It really looked like a bloom. And one thing that really helped me uh, was to uh, compare it to other plants. And someone actually just asked, what's an inflorescence? So an inflorescence is a whole bunch of little flowers gathered together. And you actually probably are very familiar with some inflorescences in your day-to-day -day flowers that you encounter. Uh, one really uh, common one is the anthurium. So let me see if I can find this picture here. Uh, not that one, but this one. So yeah, the anthurium is a pretty popular house plant and kind of similar to our corpse flower. The red part is that spade that's a protective part. It's actually a modified leaf. Uh, and that the middle of it, that kind of it looks like a corn on the cob to me <laughs> type structure is the inflorescence. So and similarly, it's a whole bunch of little flowers uh, gathered together. And this is a relative in the same family as the corpse flower. Uh, so it's not surprising that it has that similar shape bloom. And another common uh, individual, this is a very popular house plant as well, the monstera. Uh, you can see the white bloom down there, similar structure, that uh, protective uh, white space and then the inflorescence in the center. So hopefully that helps clarify what we're seeing with the corpse flower and in terms that we're a little more familiar with uh, since it's such a, an odd and rare plant, but it's related to these much more common ones and blooms similarly as well. All right, so it looks like we got another question. So thanks so much, Sarah, for sharing that. It's We have a question that says, by, 
Tanya says, how are the flowers pollinated in the wild? Ah, that's a great question. So uh, I don't have the pictures right here to show you, but it is by insects. So the reason why the corpse flower uh, makes that stench that it's so notorious for is it's attracting uh, carrion feasting bugs, things like dung beetles and flesh flies and critters that are looking for places to lay their eggs. So it would be a great place for their larvae to grow up if they were to be on something that's decomposing. Now, this is really a trick in the case of the corpse flower because it's not actually decomposing. It's not a food source, but these unsuspecting insects are attracted to that cell. They might come in, brush up against those flowers and successfully pollinate it in the process. So uh, even today, I, I stopped by the conservatory and our horticulturists noticed that there were a lot more flies in the building than usual. And they thought that uh, they had been attracted by our neighborhood corpse flower. So maybe even our, our local uh, carrion uh, insects are attracted by the smell there, even if they're not the uh, native Sumatran pollinators that the normally reach this plant. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, great. So I have another question by Dave. And is the spadex solid or hollow? That's a oh, great question. Yeah, great question. Um, so let's go back to that picture of the, the spadex for a moment. Uh, and so we're talking about that big structure in the middle. And this is actually what's generating all of those scents that uh, this plant is notorious for. And it's, it's actually pretty hollow. So uh, it is a very thin outer coating and then the inside kind of has a network of really light structural stuff. It's almost like one of those pieces of cardboard that has uh, the little zigzag bits in it that give it its shape, but it's it's hollow. It's hard to describe. <laughs> I imagine it also like the, the bone of a bird. It's hollow on the inside, but has all kinds of little uh, networked bits to give it structure. But uh, yeah, that's a pretty important part of, of this plant. and. I haven't actually uh, touched it to see if it holds up to a, a poke. I don't, I don't think I want to learn the hard way on that, but apparently it's pretty thin on the outside there. Awesome. That's great. All right. I think that's pretty much it with all of our questions. Um, so I just want to thank you guys all for tuning in and sending in your questions. We're just ready to wrap up for today. But first, we want to just thank you guys all just for joining us and taking the time out of your day. And don't forget, there's a link in the description of this video where you can donate to help the conservatory. And you can share your special behind the scenes content and updates throughout the, conser throughout the corpse bloom. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate your support. So Sarah, are there just two more broadcasts left happening for the bloom? There are. So the conservatory is open until nine o'clock tonight, and then we're open tomorrow again from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. And we're just open at the front for you to peek in at the flower, but worth the trip. And uh, we'll be doing two more similar broadcasts tomorrow. We'll be chatting with one of our horticulturists tomorrow at noon and uh, talking a little bit about how we care or how the horticulture team cares for uh, the corpse flowers, among other amazing tropical plants. And then at seven o'clock, we'll be doing our very last broadcast and talking all about conservation of this plant because it's an endangered species. Uh, so we wanna talk about how to protect its habitat. And it comes from a really amazing part of the world. So we'll be learning a little bit about the rainforests of Sumatra. So uh, join us at 12 and seven tomorrow, right back here on YouTube. All right, goodbye everybody. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, bye. Hey.